This is Triple Divide Peak in Montana. Triple Divide Peak is special because rain and melting snow can flow west to the Pacific Ocean, north to the Arctic Ocean, or east to the Atlantic Ocean. And this is us. We're four friends following the water from Triple Divide Peak 3,500 miles by canoe to the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. This is the story of our rivers on the river. Welcome back to On the River. This week, we made it to South Dakota, where we crossed Lake Oahe, and then we landed in Pier, South Dakota. Wait a second. Do you hear that sound? Oh, look. There's a colony of terns. What are they doing? It looks like they're fishing. We've seen lots of animals as we paddled down the river, and most of them are hunting or eating. This week on the river, we're going to explore the food cycle and how the animals that we've seen fit into it. Food cycle? I thought it was a food chain. It's called a food cycle because the energy that comes from the food we eat is passed around and around in a cycle that never ends. Wait, so the pizza we ate yesterday goes around and around in a cycle and we eat it again and again? Yuck! No, 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 it's not gross. Let me show you. All the life that we've seen on this trip can be split into three categories. Producers, consumers, or decomposers. Producers use the energy from the sun to produce their own food. Nearly all the producers on the planet are plants. Like these grasses I'm sitting in, or these cottonwoods that give us shade when we need to rest. The next group is the consumers. They get their energy from other plants and animals. The consumers can be split up into two different groups. Primary consumers eat plants. They're called herbivores. Secondary consumers eat animals. They are called carnivores. Wait, I eat fish and things like apples, which are plants and animals. So what does that make me? Good question, Matt. That makes you an omnivore. Omnivores eat plants and animals, just like the coyote we saw the other day. Now because sometimes you eat plants and sometimes you eat animals, sometimes you're a primary consumer and sometimes you're a secondary consumer. The last group are the decomposers. They eat plants and animals once they die. So the producers get their energy from the sun. Primary consumers eat those producers. Secondary consumers eat the primary consumers. And last, decomposers eat them all when they die. That looks like a chain, not a cycle. It's a cycle thanks to the decomposers. They take the more complicated molecules and break them down into simpler things that plants and animals can use. Oh, I see. So the decomposers are kind of like recyclers. Exactly. They take the basic building blocks of life and break them down into things that plants can use to grow. Then those plants will feed the consumers. Oh, so the pizza I ate the other day doesn't go around and around like I said, but it breaks down into tinier pieces such as carbon and nitrogen, and those get incorporated into the cycle, and in that way the cycle doesn't end. Yeah, but I bet you don't only eat pizza. Uh, I wish. Of course. I eat lots of different things. Me too. Here are some of the organisms we've seen so far. Can you pick out the producers? You're right. These are the producers. They get their energy from the sun. These lines show the flow of energy from the sun to the plants. Can you pick out the primary consumers? That's right. These are the animals that eat the producers. You can see that the grasshopper eats willows, cottonwoods, and grasses. So there are lines going from all three plants to the grasshopper. Some primary consumers have lines coming from several plants because they can eat more than one type of plant. That makes them generalists. Others only have one line because they only eat one type of plant, making them specialists. Can you pick out the secondary consumers? Good job! These are the animals that eat other animals. Can you pick out the decomposers? That's right! The arrows go from all the plants and animals to the decomposers because the decomposers use their nutrients once they are dead. Decomposers return the building blocks of life back to the soil so plants can reuse them. 
More lines go from the decomposers to the plants because they feed the plants with nutrients. Ooh, I don't like fungus. Yes, you do. You love mushrooms on your pizza. Oh, decomposers are tasty. And they make the food chain a food cycle. It's starting to look more like a food web to me. Hmm. That's right. Animals don't live independently of each other. They're all interacting, and that's why it looks like a food web. And the more lines there are, the more resilient that food web is. But even the strongest food web can be broken if humans are irresponsible. And that's why we have to keep the water clean. Because if we break just one chain in the food web, the whole web falls apart. Because humans are part of the food web, we have to take care of all the plants and animals. Exactly. And that's what we're doing. We're traveling down the river, learning about the river, and we're not polluting the water because we need to keep it clean for us to drink and to keep the food web healthy so that we can all eat delicious food and go on be beautiful canoe trips. That's food for thought. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. And we'll see you next time when we take five. Ah.